Hello again. It's time for 8.5. So uh, let's take a look at our new strategy. Each section we introduce a new strategy for taking integrals uh, that uh, using our previous methods either is impossible or just cumbersome. So uh, we could do this one. We could do this one integration by parts, or not by parts, uh, with uh, trig substitution. We could uh, do completing the square, do trig substitution, and so forth. It would be a, a little long, though. But what if instead we noticed that this rational expression here could be expressed in a different way, in this way? It could be written like this. So if I can write this rational expression in this way, taking the derivative is much easier. I just use the log rule. Right? This is like du over u. The derivative of x minus 1 would be 1 dx. And that's what we have up here, essentially, if we distribute this dx. So this would be the natural log of x minus 1. Uh, then this would be minus the natural log of x plus 2 and of course plus c. Uh, so using the log rules, natural log of x minus 1 over x plus 2 uh, and that would be you know, plus c. Okay, So that's the idea. But how in the world do I know that this is equal to this? Uh, that's called partial fraction decomposition or partial fraction expansion and we're gonna go over that. Uh, we're just gonna jump right into some practice problems that bring up new issues uh, that we need to compensate for and uh, well you'll see. So well we want to find the integral of this the integral of, of this rational expression. First thing to check always got to be sure that it's proper. Proper rational expression means that the degree of the bottom is or the denominator is greater than the degree of the numerator. This is degree, you can see it's degree 3. I'm going to wind up with an x to the third. This is degree 2, so it is proper. So what we're proposing at this is that this could be the integral of um, some, some sum of, of rational expressions. And I'll show you what I mean by all that. So what I'm proposing is that there's some A, number A, number B, number C out there that when I put them in and I go to add all these together, what I'm going to wind up is, is with this. Uh, and you can kind of see that that's pretty much believable because if I were to add these three together, you know, not really paying attention to A, B, and C, but paying attention to what's, being, what's going to be the common denominator. Well, it's going to be x times x minus 2 times x plus 2. There you go. Uh, and by doing that, you know, I'm going to wind up multiplying this a by something. You know, this x is going to eliminate the x in the common denominator. Um, when I, uh, well, what's going to happen is I need to multiply this x by x minus 2 times x plus 2 to make this have the common denominator. So I'm also going to need to multiply this number by x minus 2 times x plus 2. Uh, same things for B and C, and I just want to find out what are those numbers that when I do all that, it's all just going to work out the way that I want it to. Uh, well, let's go about finding them, okay? So I'm, I'm going to have to ask you to imagine some things just to save some space in the paper. Just imagine that, you know, rather than looking at the integrals, all I'm looking at is the work with the, the partial fraction decomposition. Uh, imagine that the equation just includes... Uh, this fraction is equal to the sum of all these fractions. Not, not too difficult. Okay. Then what I'm going to do, the, the next step that I'm about to write down is going to be achieved by doing this. Multiplying both sides of the equation I just asked you to, to think about without the integrals, without dx, just the fractions. Multiply both sides of that equation by the common denominator. If I multiply this side by that common denominator, this will be eliminated. If I multiply this side by the common denominator, each of these is going to eliminate, it's going to cancel out some part of that common denominator. This is going to eliminate the x, this is going to eliminate the x minus 2, this is going to eliminate the x plus 2. 
Uh, and so uh, I'm going to be left with just pieces multiplied by a, b, and c. So let's write the left side. The left side would be 5x squared minus 12x minus 12 equals. Uh, I'm going to multiply this by the common denominator. Well, that's going to cancel out with the x. And what's going to be left is a times x minus 2 times x plus 2. Okay, and then I'm going to multiply this by the common denominator. Well, that's going to wind up being b times x times x plus 2. Because the x minus 2 would have gotten canceled. And x minus, or the 3 times, 3 over x plus 2 times the common denominator, the x plus 2 is going to be canceled. And we're going to have c times x times x minus 2. Okay, so now. How do we go about finding A, B, and C? Uh, let's say to find C, actually I think probably A would be easier to find because this equation, complicated as it may look, which by the way, again, it was achieved by multiplying both sides of this equation, the equation that involves just the fractions, multiplying both sides by the common denominator and letting things cancel out. Uh, so if you, if you did that, you would, you would find this. So this equation needs to be true for all values of x. Any value of x that I plug into here, once I have my a, b, and c, it would need to be true for all values of x. So I assume that it's true for all values of x. And I can put in any value of x, and it should, it should all be true. So I can just assume any value of x can be plugged in here. So I can choose values of x that will be convenient. And what I mean by convenient is imagine if I plugged in a 0 here, what would happen? The 0 would get multiplied by the rest of this, and the c term would just disappear. Uh, also, a 0 in here would mean that 0 times the rest of this would mean this would go away. Uh, this would not be eliminated, so a would be left by itself. So that's very nice. That's very convenient. So let's do that. It won't take up much room because this will be gone. This will be gone. This will be, let's see, 0 plus 2 is 2. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. So negative 2 times 2 would be negative 4a. And putting in a 0 here, this would be gone. This would be gone. This would be negative 4, or sorry, negative 12. So a would then be 3. So I found a. Let's go on and try and find another one. Let's say that we let x be equal to mm, 2. If we let x be equal to 2, then this will be 2 minus 2. That'll be 0. Uh, 2 minus 2, that'll be 0. And that means the a term and the c term will be gone, but the b term will be left. Okay, So a term eliminated, c term eliminated by putting in a 2. Uh, so we put in a 2 in here, and we have um, 2 plus 2 is 4 times bx would be 4bx. 4bx. That's equal to... Um, oh, I'm sorry. That, that's a mistake I made. I should have put a 2 in for this x, of course. So um, a 2 plus 2, that's 4. Times 2, that'll be 8b. This makes much more sense. It would have worked out, but this is easier for us to see. 8b, when I put in a 2 for x. And then I'm going to put in a 2 over here. I'm going to wind up with uh, a 2 times 2. A 2 squared is 4. 4 times 5 is 20. Uh, 2 times negative 12 is negative 24. And this is just negative 12. There's nothing doesn't get affected by the x. So 20 minus 24 is negative 4, minus 12 is negative 16. So negative 16 is equal to 8b, and look at that, b is equal to negative 2. All right. Uh, so fantastic. What next? What's another convenient value of, uh, of x? Let's see, if we put in, you can see that these share this factor of x plus 2. So if we put in a negative 2 and a negative 2, then we'll eliminate the a and the b, and c will be left. Okay? 
this is gone, this is gone, so negative two in here. Negative two minus two is going to be uh, negative four times a negative two is gonna be eight. So eight C. So I was putting a negative two here and here. Negative two over here. Negative two squared is four. Four times five is 20 again. Negative two times negative 12 is positive 24. And there's negative 12. Okay, so uh, 20 plus 24 is 44. Minus 12 would be 32. And that's equal to 8C. And C is equal to 4. Okay, so a partial fraction decomposition is equal to, uh, now with A, B, and C being replaced, A is 3, B is negative 2, and C is 4. So, I'll do the rest of my work in red, just so it's kind of distinguishable. We're actually going to do the work of finding this integral. So the integral of uh, 3 over x plus negative 2 over x minus 2 plus 4 over x plus 2 dx. Okay, so I won't draw it out because these are things we can find integrals of. We don't need to discuss anything new to find these integrals. I'm going to use the log rule here and uh, I'll find that this is three times the natural log of x. Uh, factor out, or pull out this negative two, get the negative two times the natural log of x minus two, uh, plus four times the natural log of x plus two, plus c. Using the rules of logs, um, I have that this is the natural log of, let's just call it x cubed, um, let's say this is minus the natural log of x minus 2 squared plus the natural log of x plus 2 to the fourth, and then using more rules of logs, we have that this is the natural log of this whole thing here, this is x times x minus 2, um, oh shoot, I'm sorry, this is over x minus 2, uh, and this would be uh, squared uh, times x plus 2 to the fourth, okay? Using those rules of logs, uh, I can um, write it this way. This part becomes x to the third, x to the third over x minus two squared, and then this addition tells me I multiply by x plus two to the fourth, okay? So in the next video, we'll go over a few more examples. Uh, see you there.